Hey, it's Mike, and this is an interview that I did with Scott Herman from the incredibly popular YouTube channel, Scott Herman Fitness. Uh, and also, he also has a website, which I believe is scotthermanfitness.com, which is uh, full of content and all kinds of good stuff, and it's also very popular. And uh, I think he said he, he's, he's going to be appearing in a movie soon, and he has some different fitness products coming out. So he's kind of really branching out and doing some cool stuff. Uh, but more importantly, what I like about Scott is, one, he's a very cool guy. He's very down-to-earth. He genuinely just wants to help people. Um, and I see that not only in his just his demeanor and how he goes about his business now, but going all the way back to his beginning where you know uh, YouTube was was up and coming it was getting popular he was he'd always always been into fitness and he would get asked a lot of questions so he figured you know I don't know maybe if I make some videos people will care maybe I can help some people and uh, and then people liked his videos and so he kind of said well hey this could be something and then has now built it into this whole thing which is you know kind of similar to my story but my story is maybe more with the writing um, and, and also I, I like that Scott, he gives good advice. He has a lot of great videos, uh, especially on form, how to do a bunch of exercises correctly. He talks about pretty much anything you'd, you'd have a question or you'd want to know. He's probably talked about in a video and, uh, I like his advice. He knows what, he knows what he's doing. Um, he has a lot of experience, not just with on his, with his own body, but also with working with a lot of people and interacting with a lot of people and seeing what kind of problems that they run into and how to best overcome them. So let's get to the interview. I think you're going to like it. All right. Hey, All right. Scott, thanks for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me again. Always a pleasure coming here to chat with you. Yeah, totally. Um, so let's just jump right into it here. So, you know, like many people, many fitness folk, uh, you enjoy endurance events, right? Like kind of tough muttered obstacle course kind of stuff. Yes. And you're getting more and more into that, actually. You have a, I remember you were talking about you have a whole product. Uh, is that out yet, by the way? The, the the video I did for it. Well, yeah, you you, you were you were, you were saying you were creating like a whole uh, a whole product on how to train for these events. Yeah, we actually we I, I was part of the Edge of Tomorrow team for Tough Mudder out in Seattle, Washington. Right, to right. Promote, to promote the movie Edge of Tomorrow, but I was on a team with a bunch of people from like American Ninja Warrior, some Olympic athletes, and we basically ran the course. But before we went out there, you know, I wanted to make sure. There's a lot of videos that show how to train for a Tough Mudder, but I feel like they, they're a little on the extreme side. Yeah. Training for a Tough Mudder, you know, obviously if you want to be top of the pack, you got to train pretty hard. But just to get your body ready to be able to do better than average, it doesn't require you to go to the gym and do all these like crazy different exercises. It just requires you to put your body through a lot of like the simple basic motions. And so... For example, one of the things I, I show and talk about in my video, if you if you want to watch it, just search uh, Scott Herman Tough Mudder. I'll even find the link for you if you want to put it somewhere, Mike. But yeah, sure, I'll, I'll link it. Uh, you know, yeah. The, the most common injury is people like falling down or twisting their ankles from having weak ankles. Mm. And you know, how, think about how often you you even move side to side anymore unless yeah. you're playing a sport. Yeah, you know? I grew up playing ice hockey, and I remember in the beginning my ankles were just destroyed for probably the first, I don't know, three months. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny because I, I, I run outside around town, and I do like the side gallop, you know? Yeah. And I always think it's funny when cars drive by and I'm side galloping, <laughs> like I'm like an idiot, you know? <laughs> but you, you, you can just like take your shirt off, side gallop, and talk to yourself, and they'll just be like, all right, well, this guy, and we'll just leave him alone. Yeah, put a bandana on too. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. My friend yesterday at the gym, he's like, "Dude, did you the 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 road I run down is called 111? It's like a a route, you know." Yeah. He's like, "Dude, were you running down 111 over the weekend? I think I saw you." <laughs> like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> the only person who runs down that road. <laughs> yeah. So busy. But yeah, the, that video came out. It was pretty cool. Um, you know, got a lot of good hits, and we actually. We we the video was made by my friend Ben and his team, and it's all black and white. It's like it's a pretty epic video. Even the music to the video is custom. It's cool. it's pretty legit, man. I'm gonna check it out for sure. I'll link it uh, on the on the download page for this interview. Yeah, like we uh, we even like put water all over the floor in my studio to get yeah. a cool vibe. It was it was very cold um, to lay on, but the video looks awesome. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 often asked about because you know these events are getting more and more popular. Where people will write me and ask, like, 
how can they train for the event to like, yeah, maybe they're not trying to, you know, finish in the top 10 or something like that, but how can they train for an event without losing a bunch of strength or kind of burning away a bunch of muscle? Because as you said, a lot of the training recommendations out there are pretty extreme. And if you're weightlifting three to five days a week, and if you're doing a lot of heavy compound stuff, it's, it's, you're not going to be able to now add like 10 hours of intense cardio a week without burning yourself out. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. How, how do you, how do you do it? Well, I'm actually, I just got the link for you right here. So okay. I'm going to send that to you. So now you got it. Cool. It's called Ultimate Guide to Tough Mudder Full Training Program. And if you go into the info section, you know, basically what you're doing is, I think high intensity interval training is a really great way to get your cardio in. I yeah. mean, you don't really want to do a lot of really long distance cardio for Tough Mudder because at the end of the day, you're not running a super long distance. You're running, you know, maybe a mile and then you have an obstacle and then maybe a half mile and you have another obstacle. Right. So there's all these rest periods. So you don't have to think that you have to have the endurance to be able to run for 13 miles straight, you know? Right. And plus they, they count the obstacles as miles as well. Hmm. So the way my program works is you start off with some hit training, um, and you actually are going to do flat and incline. So I have you doing 25 minutes of hit training in the beginning. So if for those who don't know what hit training is, you would do like one minute as fast as you can, and then maybe a slow walk jog for another minute, and you would alternate back and forth each time. Right. Or you can even go even easier and do one minute walk jog and then 30 seconds of running, you know, if you're not a strong runner. Yeah. And when, when, when programs say to run, they're basically just wanting you to go faster than a walk. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I suck at running, you know, just run as fast as you can. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. that's your, and that's your interval of high intensity. And then. Yeah. I mean, the idea is that you're spiking your heart rate. So it's relative, yeah. you know, that depending on, on your conditioning, uh, it might not take, uh, necessarily a full out sprint to, to raise you, to elevate your heart rate to that 150 to whatever, 170, uh, beats per minute range. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But even going farther than that, you know, people, because there's a lot of people doing these events that, you know, don't even work out. It's like their, first, their intro to it. And so right. I just think when they see the word run, they go, damn, like, not not to call out Erica, but she hates running. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like running. I like biking. I don't like running. Yeah. Not calling her out, but calling her out anyway. She hates running, you know? Yeah. yeah. And we run together all the time on the treadmill, but I don't expect her, for her intense running, you know, I run all the time. So I kind of have to juice the treadmill up to like, you know, 10 to 12, you know, getting close to the max speed to yeah. really feel like I'm getting a good run, you know? Yeah. So everyone's different on that aspect. But you also want to make sure you're you're doing things on flat surfaces and inclined surfaces. I mean, the best thing to do would be to see what the terrain's like where your Tough Mudder is. So, for example, the one I did in Seattle was, like, very, very flat. You know, very, you know, maybe small hills, like, in the woods. And by small, I mean, like, slight inclines and then declines. Mm. But the Tough Mudders that I do in Vermont are on the side of the mountain. So... You know, if you're not used to going uphill or running uphill, the first thing to give out is your calves. And so you need to make sure you're, you're trained for that. And you can easily do that just by inclining the treadmill. And so for those 25 minutes of hit cardio, I do 15 minutes of flat and then 10 minutes of incline. And that's it. That makes sense. And, and when you're, when you're prepping for these types of things, how much cardio are you doing? Are you doing like three or four sessions a week? Or are you doing more or less? Yeah, I would, I'm doing it about, Maybe four max, yeah. usually around two to three. And yeah, I'm the same way. I, I find that if I start doing, <laughs> that's just how my body is. If I if I start doing, f I've tried five or even six kind of hit sessions per week, it, I start to notice it in the gym. It's just my my leg workouts suffer a little bit, and uh, especially if I'm in a calorie deficit, then it's, then I really can't do it. But oh yeah, definitely, it, it it kills me too. That's why I try to keep it at a minimum. Yeah, you know, I was I was getting irritated. Um, at the Tough Mudder in Seattle because there was there was this kid on my team. His name was James, and um, he's an American Ninja Warrior. He actually he he's made it to the finale I think twice. Wow. So he's one of like this the good ones. Man, the dude is a machine, and we we had been traveling for like two months straight, 
And I was, was I sick, babe? I thought I was getting a little sick by, yeah, I was like starting to get sick. I was having like fevers and whatnot. And here's this kid on my team, you know, running like hardcore the whole time. And I'm like, I'm not going to let this, I mean, I, we were, we were were (laughs) friends, you know, but I'm like, screw this kid. Yeah. So I'm trying to keep up with him the whole time. (laughs) And he's just taking off and I'm like, oh, damn it. Here we go again. You know, but it was good because it kind of kicked me out of my funk. Yeah. But man, I was like, wow, I I need to get work on my cardio some more. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure if, if if he's on that, I mean, that's what he does these crazy uh, obstacles. Because I mean, obviously, if that's all you were training for, you'd be doing different things. Your entire training routine would be different if that's really all you're looking for. It's good cardio endurance and good, you know, body weight, muscular endurance, where you can just throw your body weight around for, you know, forever. Yeah, I mean, the dude is, like, really thin, and then he flexes his bicep, and it looks like a boulder was inserted into his arm. It's so, <laughs> like, really, he looks he looks way thinner, you know, than, than I do, and then he flexes his bicep, and it's just like, whoosh. I was like, holy crap. You know, because they do a lot of work, you know, a lot of pull-ups, a lot of yeah. stand ladders, a lot of everything. Yeah, just but, training specifically for, you know, these, these types of courses. Yeah, well, with that in mind, um, so this workout has two circuits, right? And the circuits are to prepare your body for doing these obstacles. And so the the first exercise is a monkey bar pull up. And a lot of people when they get to the monkey bars, it's like they cringe, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And so if you have access to monkey bars, you're basically, you know, you go to the first bar and do a pull up, go to the next bar, do a pull up, go to the third bar, do a pull up, you know? Because you're I want you guys to do pull ups to work your back and build up a body strength. Uh, but also, if you're not used to monkey bars, having to let go of the bar and re-grip, that's what gets your forearms tired, you know? Mm-hmm. And so this workout also has modifiers for all of this. So there might be people who can't even do a pull-up. And so, like, we have modifiers to get people to be able to do, you know, one pull-up and then go to the extreme to do monkey bars. And for the people who don't have access to monkey bars, I have a few modifications that you can do just with a standard pull-up bar to kind of simulate the 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 letting go and regripping of when you're doing monkey bars, mm. and then you know we have things like a plyo push up and there's modifiers for that as well, like doing a regular push up or doing it on your knees, and then we have a goblet squat, and then the second circuit. So this all takes probably about 45 minutes to do, right? And then the second circuit, you know, you I have people doing an army crawl. Because army crawling is part, like having to crawl through all these tubes and tunnels that are that yep. are throughout the course. Yeah. And then uh, I superset that with like uh, an alternating jumping lunge. Cool. Yeah, and then I, just uh, for the listeners, you can find this on YouTube uh, if you just search. It's called the the name of the video is uh, Ultimate Guide to Tough Mudder Full Training Program, and it's on Scott Herman Fitness is the channel. Uh, so if you just search that, it'll come up, and I'll, I'll also link it, uh, like I said, on the download page, so people can go check this out. But that's great. Yeah. I mean, so it's like, don't go, don't go crazy with your, with your training. Don't go crazy with your cardio, uh, focus on high intensity cardio to build up your, your, your cardiovascular capacity without burning your body out and then do some specific type of routines that are just going to prepare your body for what you have to do. Right. It's kind of like the, the summary. Exactly. And we also, at the very end, we go over what to wear because that can Mm. really, that can really make the Tough Mudder an enjoyable or horrible experience. You know, like, for example, if you go into the Tough Mudder wearing, like, clunky sneakers, mm. they're going to feel like 30-pound cement blocks after that first mud puddle you jump in. Yeah, yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. Clothing, too. I mean, people like to go to Tough Mudder, and they like to dress up in costumes and whatnot. And, you know, like, I saw a group of dudes once go, like, they all had suits on, you know. <laughs> and, you know, suits... Suits aren't that comfortable to begin with, you know, let alone when they're wet, if you happen to be out in rain. I can yeah. only imagine what it feels like to wear a suit and have mud caked in all your jacket and your clothes and your shoes and belts. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume they didn't win. Yeah, well, nobody wins because it's a team event, but... Oh, well, they didn't, well, what, they didn't, is it, you, I don't even I know exactly, you, they don't have, like, placing, like, oh, your first place, your second place? No, I mean, they... They they do like they have a way to track it to like see who how fast people complete the yeah event, times right you can, 
because you can then go on to do different types of mutters where it's more um, co- competitive. Right. But Tough Mudder is mainly, they, they want you to focus on, you know, helping each other, you know, working together and overcoming obstacles and supporting each other. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. But, yeah, they still obviously have that competitive atmosphere to it. Like, the last one was cool because now that I'm a Legionnaire, because I've done, like, six Tough Mudders or four, t- I don't know how many I've done, like, five maybe. Right. But anyways, so you get a special headband, and there were a few obstacles that were a little more difficult, and you could only do them if you were a legionnaire, so mm. it was pretty cool. That's cool. That's fun. All right, cool. So great. So yeah, I'll link the video. People can go check it out and learn more, but that's a, that, that's a good summary of, of basically also what I just generally recommend when people ask me about it. Um, so let's move on to this next point here, which is that you know, similar to me, you've been, you've been lifting for a long time now. And, you know, I think we've pretty much maxed out our genetic potential. Um, like if you just look at your fat free, fat free mass index, uh, I'm sure you're right up at the top of what you can naturally achieve in terms of muscle growth. I, I know I am. Um, yeah, I think at this point, uh, if I do grow, it's going to be areas that can still grow like yeah. traps or calves. You know what I mean? It's not exactly. gonna be like my arm's going to hit 18 inches. Yeah, exactly. And I'm the same way. Like I, I'll take a little bit more of my calves and a little bit more of my shoulders as, you know, as a natural weight lifter, your shoulders are never, they're always too small. <laughs> that's yeah. Much well, the, that's the number one way to figure out when someone's juicing, you know? Yeah, yeah of course. The big, massive delts, the massive upper chest. Oh, uh, I'm all natural. I just eat a lot of protein. Yeah. And then <laughs> the, the, the crazy acne everywhere, which is just the, an allergy to the protein, right? Yeah. Uh, it's an allergenic to protein. That, that's a protein. That's a protein allergy. Um, <laughs> so, so you know, with uh, what's w- with that being said, what's your motivation at this point? Um, like, what do people? Because you know, a lot of people when they're getting into fitness, they're look, they're obviously looking to to get that type of body they want. But then it's an interesting thing once you pretty much have the body you want. Uh, if you're gonna, you can kind of have this new this new problem of you know. I don't know for you, but even for me, even if I could gain another 10 pounds or 15 pounds of muscle, I actually wouldn't want to because I don't want to be big and bold. I don't want to look like, uh, you know, a bodybuilder per se. Um, and you know, it's, so what's it's, your motivation? Like what, you know, you're not going to see any more major improvements in your physique and, or your performance I mean, necessarily. I'm sure, you know, just like you, I just kind of like to stand naked in front of like a tall mirror and look at myself, <laughs> you know, and if I was not looking good, it wouldn't be a good experience. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> you know, it's funny It's funny you say that because this is something that Erica and I talk about um, on a weekly basis, not necessarily my gains, but the industry in general and, you know, where everything is going. Uh, I mean, you're you're my age, right? You're on 30? Yeah, I'm 30. Yeah, so we're both 30. I mean, I'm not, when I was 18, you know, I, I was, were, I, my biggest concerns were how much weight I could lift and yeah. getting big and, you know, walking around, flexing my chest and, you know, looking real good. And I mean, I, obviously, to some point, I mean, we're all still that same vein, like 18 year old. We want to look good, you yeah. know, but we're a little more mature now. Um, but, you know, I, the, one of the most irritating things I see online is when dudes come at me and they're like, oh my God, you've been lifting forever. Why aren't you bigger? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they send me like a person's name to look up on Google. They're like, this dude's big. And I look at him and he's like the most unnatural person I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's like, you know, why are you comparing me to this? But more, more or less. You know, I get irritated because I hate how everyone assumes just because you lift weights, your goal is to become a monster because that's like you said, you know, even if you could gain an extra 10 pounds, you wouldn't want to. And that's my thing. And I reply to people. I'm like, you know, I don't want to be huge like that. If I wanted to be, I I would, you know, I do, you know, like and you'd have to you'd have to get on drugs. I mean, that's that's the end of the story. Like there's a certain type of look. If you wanted to gain 20 pounds of muscle, you're not doing that naturally. There's no way that with your body where it's at right now, it's not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And on top of that, you know, um, I do a lot of different things. I'm not sure if I if we talked last time, but my 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 first DVD is out right now on Amazon and it's going to be in Best Buy and Sam's Club and Target real soon. Nice. But those DVDs, you know, those are, they're, they're really hard, intense workouts and you can build muscle doing them, but, you know, they require a lot of endurance. And on top of that, you know, you have to do, I'm doing these exercises while talking. So like career, career wise, 
I need to be able to have, you know, a good amount of endurance. So, yep. you know, getting that big is really kind of productive to my career. And also, too, like, I got a, I got a, a comment yesterday, you know, and someone's like, do you have a regular nine to five job or do you only do YouTube? Like talking to me like YouTube is the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> and I responded, I was like, no, bro, I don't have a regular nine to five job. I have a 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, YouTube, you know, I, I get that asked that sometimes. I ask that sometimes too. So you just do this as like a side thing. Like wh- what <laughs> do are you, are you serious? Like do you, <laughs> What, aside, what uh, if I didn't have to? Do I? I don't sleep, or what, how does that work exactly? Yeah, you know, and like I just, Erica and I decided to do these like uh, these holiday workout videos. They're all forty five minutes a piece. Yeah. Well, they're the videos aren't forty five minutes. The workouts are you can you can go in and out of the gym in forty five minutes or less and get a hardcore workout done. You know, and we did these ones as full length videos showing all the sets and all the reps. It takes me like four hours just to edit one of those videos, and I put out like six of them, you know? Yeah. So it takes a lot <laughs> out of you. Um, anyway, yeah, definitely. That, and, that, and that type of work it just kind of feels like drudgery. You just sit there, put music, and just drone, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And voiceovers and all that stuff. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I guess back to, to the main question. You know, my main goal right now is focusing on ways to make my business you know, sustainable for the long run. And a lot of other YouTubers right now, they're, they're just focused on that next video and getting bigger. So people can tell them how big they are in the comment section. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it's okay. When I, another 10 years, when I'm 40, is, is this how my life's going to be? Or am I going to be, you know, successful? My, my website's running itself. I'm actually, I want to get to the point where now I'm actually bringing in other people who are trying to do what I'm doing and teach them how to do this and have them be content providers on my website and right. start to kind of really grow my community. I mean, my community has always been about – my website's always been about community, but now I want to start focusing on helping those members who are trying, you know, to put out quality content, you know, get out there. And that's kind of my main focus right now. I still want to go to the gym. I'm still working on certain things. Obviously, I'm still lifting heavy. I'm still keeping the intensity there. But yes, you know, like you said, I'm not. I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna be 200 pounds. You know, yeah. maybe one day I'll be a solid 180, <laughs> which would be great. <laughs> How tall are you? Five ten. Oh, okay. Yeah, five ten, two hundred. Lean is. Uh is all natty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all natural. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm 6'2", and I weigh 190 right now, and I'm somewhere between 7 and 8%. So even me, I don't I, I don't know if I even naturally could get to 200 and still be this lean. If I could, it would probably take three or four years would be my – two or three years minimum would be my guess. And I don't – not that I even want to, but, you know, sometimes people, they don't realize uh, how – what the – potential what the natural muscle potential really is because of so many people that like you said are out there that look like Arnold that did in his prime or bigger and you know they lie about their weight they say they weigh less than they do that's that you know you probably heard, you probably know that little game uh where some yeah. dude some dude is Arnold size you know 510 and he says he weighs 200 pounds you're like well what Arnold is what six foot 230 and he looked smaller than you and how does that work exactly yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of that going around, and uh, it can it can mess with people, understandably. So, yeah, I, I know where you're coming from on that. Uh, in well, your, I, post, I posted um two days ago uh, my video. It's called "Are You Bulking or Just Fat?" Mm. And I talk about lean gains. And this kid is so ignorant, and there's so much ignorance around this. You know, kind of going off what you said, and he's like, you know, you're selling false hopes, telling people that they can make lean gains. He's like, why don't you just, you know, bulk and cut like every other natural bodybuilder and gain some, gain some more muscle you've been lifting for so long. And then he, and then he left a name of a natural lifter. And I went to look at the kid's photos and he's so juiced out of his face. It wasn't even funny. Yeah. And my response to this kid, I was like, you know, dude, you know, you can only gain like, and the misconception is this. I mean, if it's your first year lifting, you're going to gain a good 20, 25 pounds of muscle. Right. You know? Yeah, I, I think that's like if you have good genetics. I've seen – I mean, you've probably seen this. I mean, I've worked with a ton of people. I think 
like just for the listener to qualify that it depending on your genetics yes i'd say the average probably 15 to 20 pounds i think if you if you were like spot on you don't miss you don't have any you don't miss your workouts you don't mess up with your cuts where like you know a lot of people they'll they'll sit in a calorie deficit for six months because they're just not very <laughs> strict with their diet and so then they, they don't build as much muscle but yeah i think the the most you could probably hope for is 25 pounds in your first year yeah, well, that's this is like the science behind it. Yeah. And then your second year is like 10 to 12, your third year is like 5 to 6, and your fourth year and every year after that, you're going to gain like around 4 pounds, 5 pounds, maybe max, max a muscle yeah. a year. Yeah. And so I responded to this kid. I was like, dude, I was like, you know, I you're really misinformed because no matter how fat you get, you're not going to gain more than five pounds of muscle if you're in your fourth plus year of lifting. It's, yes. You know what I mean? It's like you can get, you can gain 80 pounds of fat and you're <laughs> going to have to lose 75. Yep. So don't come at me like I need to bulk and then lose weight. I go, cause the people who are telling you to bulk and then cut are usually the ones that are juicing their faces off because that's how they, that's how they're able to manipulate the general population because the general population is like, Oh, he gained like, 30 pounds so of course he's gonna keep like 20 pounds of muscle you know what i mean right it's kind of like how they think because they don't understand wow he gained 30 pounds of fat that's why he looks like a meatball yeah you know? yep yeah in uh in my books um like bigger than stronger but thinner and stronger i talk about bulking and cutting and the why the traditional type of bulk and cut like what you're talking about where you just eat obscene amounts of food because you go go you know go just search for how to bulk and you're gonna get a lot of recommendations of like you have 150 pound guys being told to eat 4,000 plus calories a day and uh, the yes it's 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 indisputable that that you know energy balance affects muscle growth we all know that if you're in a calorie deficit you are not going to build as much muscle as a calorie surplus but what a lot of people miss is is a surplus is a uh it's a it's a it's a point of diminishing returns it's not like oh a slight surplus means that you build a bit more muscle so a massive surplus must mean you're on steroids like no that's not how it works a, a massive surplus just means massive fat gains uh so, you know, that's that's the kind of the qualification there that if you if you keep yourself in a slight slight calorie surplus, yes, you're going to do better, you're going to get a little bit of fatter over time, but um you you'll be able to gain just as much muscle as fat, probably a 1 to 1 ratio would be the normal. Um do you agree with that? I agree. Yeah, definitely. It's it's like you said, it's a very big misconception, you know. Yeah. And uh so yeah, great. So in terms of like so now, I mean, I don't know for you, but for me, it kind of feels like my, the motivation is you've, you've built the body you want. It performs well. And now it almost feels like you get to enjoy it in a sense. Would, is, would you agree with that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like you can what, change your workouts. I know you like to do, sometimes you like to do a lot of like higher intensity type of workouts or some days, some weeks you feel like lifting really heavy. You can play with your diet a bit. Yeah, you know, I feel like too at this point, I mean, I can, you know, and also with like the lifestyle and the career and all yeah. the traveling, I feel like I'm, I can bounce back super quick, you yeah. know, if yeah. I'm out of my groove for a few weeks. It's not like, um, I still look pretty lean and muscular, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's kind of like once you really build that solid foundation, if you ever start to kind of waver away from your, your routine, it's easy to jump back in and still look just as good. Yep. So yeah, you can enjoy yourself a bit more and not to worry as much about, you know, what how much you're eating if you happen to be on some cheat meals or whatnot. Yep. But I mean, but at the end of the day, though, too, I like, I mean, I like having my schedule. I like being in the gym for a few hours. Like I feel better about myself when I'm there. Yeah. I think it's more of a, like, how do I say it? I like, I like to feel accomplished. So. If I go to the gym and do a workout and I leave, I feel like I, I did something, like I accomplished a goal of like just – like for example, if I clean my car, I feel good about myself because I did a goal. Yeah. You know, I did something that I can actually phys physically see that has been achieved and done, you know? Yeah. Yep. And working out is the same way for me. It makes me feel good. I feel like, okay, even if the workout wasn't the best workout in the world, I still feel – so much better and I don't feel stressed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you know? I mean that's and there's there's a lot of science behind that even like you have the 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 brain chemistry of what's going on, but then there's also just the psychology of it like what you're saying. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can I can definitely relate to that. And part of my motivation is is just to go train because it it feels good. And you know, I, I train early in the morning, so it's just a great way to start my day. Um, so that's also something to look forward to. Is that you know, if you, you the listener, you're probably pretty excited getting into it. But it, uh, in my opinion, I think it it stays just as equal. Like you get you're just as hooked on it, you know, in five years in as you were in the first year, because while your body isn't changing like it was in the first year, you know, in the fifth year, you're still feeling, uh, you know, you still get all the benefits of, of your workouts. You feel good about yourself. You, and then you have the added benefit of whenever you do see yourself in a mirror, you're like, oh, I look good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think there's a lot to look forward to. It's not like, a, you know, once you, once you look a certain way, now you just feel like you're wasting your time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so when you were coming up and kind of building your physique, maybe it's not so much of an issue now because of the things we're talking about, but, uh, you know, if you hit plateaus, like, in, you know, we've all experienced that, whether it's strength plateaus or uh, usually, you know, if your strength is plateaued, if you're not adding weight to the bar over time, your your physique is usually plateaued as well. Um, what were or what are, if you're still kind of trying to work through things like that, your your favorite strategies for, for keeping things moving in the right direction? For me, when I, when I feel like I'm at a stuck or sticking point, yeah. I always like to go back to my my original routines, which is a lot of um, a lot of bird sets and a lot of supersetting, mm. because I feel like that's where I'm gaining the most. When I do short rest periods and supersets or a lot of drops, it's like, for example, um, you know, I had to train differently for the holiday workout series because it's just, you know, a lot of volume with short rest periods. Yeah. And so now I'm trying to get back to how I usually train, which is I do like three or four drops on my first set of every exercise. Mm -hmm. And so like I was doing like a hundred, like hundred, like say I was doing chest, I was doing hundred pound dumbbells for you know, eight repetitions, and then I drop and grab 80s for eight, then I grab 65s for eight, then I grab, like, 50s for eight, and then I'd get, like, 30s for a set of 15, and I would crush my first set just like that. Right. And so I tried doing that this week, and I, I was barely – I did 100s for eight, and then I did, like, 65s for eight, and I was toast. <laughs> <laughs> and so – you know, it sucks because I'm like, damn, I need to I need to get back to, you know, get my endurance and my strength back up because for my body type, I, I build more more muscle and, and strength by doing these types of routines, you know? Right. And so, yeah, so for me right now, my goal is to get back to doing that on all my, all my exercises. Like today, I'm doing legs and I'm going to do it on my squats. I'm going to do... That's like, probably brutal. Yeah, it's going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I know, and in my head, I know, okay, even if I have to go a little lighter to get all the sets done, it's going to be a good thing because it's going to get my body back to that intensity where I think it feels its best. Uh. And I think a lot of lifters, they need to figure out, you know, what kind of routines work best for their bodies and what kind of routines make them feel their best, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, nothing is worse than coming out of the gym and still feeling kind of loose, you know? Yeah. And that, that bothers me a lot. <laughs> and if I, if, I, if I leave the gym and, like, for example, if I do an ab workout and I leave the gym and I don't even feel like my abs did anything, you know, I get discouraged. I'm like, damn, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. What did I do wrong? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've tried a lot of different types of uh, routines myself. And found that the higher rep stuff, I made some gains, but I made better gains with, with heavier lifting, um, and saving higher rep stuff for the end of the workouts. Yeah, see, and, and like I said, everyone is a bit different. So that's, if that's what works for you, that's perfect, you know? Yeah. yeah. And speaking of, of exercises in particular, uh, if you, you know, go into any gym and you're going to see people doing all kinds of stuff for, you know, just about every muscle group in the body, um, and you know, obviously a lot of ridiculous things. So what are some of the common mistakes that you see in terms of exercise choices and muscle groups trained? I mean, I think the most common is with arms, to be honest. Mm. I mean, squats and like bench press. You, you don't see people pro squatting properly. At least I don't, I rarely see that. You either see half, no squats or like half squats. Yeah. I mean, 
as far as exercises in succession, I feel like people screw up their arms the most because they do, like, for example, with biceps, they do a lot of swinging. There's never really a lot of full range of motion. Yeah. You know, I did a post the other day on Facebook because I was doing this, like, hardcore uh, arm routine where I was, I was supersetting biceps and triceps. I was taking 30-second rest periods, and I was doing, like, 10 reps on, on every exercise, right? Mm. And I was, like, I was destroying myself. And so I was at the – on my second superset, and I was at the dumbbell rack, and I was, I was curling 40-pound dumbbells uh, alternating one arm at a time. Mm-hmm. And then I was doing um, an overhead extension with 80 pounds standing, and I was supersetting that back forth, back forth. And this dude comes over and he starts curling 65s, right? Yeah. And he's like throwing his body into every single curl, and his elbows are going backwards as his arm goes up. So like, when you do it like that, you're not really doing much of a curl. You know what I mean? If yeah. the, if the dumbbell never goes past the bottom of your chest, that's a super easy curl to do. Yeah. You know. So anyways, and I was like, whatever. And then I, I, he sees me like struggling, like I'm making faces, my face is turning red and I'm, I'm getting all veiny because I'm pushing myself hard. And then I see him like turn around after he's done his set and start talking shit about me to his friend. <laughs> really? And I just wanted to, I just wanted to pick up like the 70 pound dumbbells and go over to him and be like, Look how easy this is because you don't know how to curl you properly. Can, you can pick up the hundreds and do those little fake curls. Yeah, and it's like I get, I get annoyed because I, I don't – I mean, whatever. I'm a dude, you know. I don't like people looking at me and, first of all, you know, just, you know, say to my face. I'm right there. I'll talk to you. I'll tell you how dumb you are, you know. <laughs> but it's like I, I sometimes I, I get irritated when I use lighter weight when I'm doing these supersets because – you get all these bros looking at you, like not understanding how to exercise properly, and they think that you're weak because you're curling 40s. When in reality, they couldn't even curl 35s doing the routine that you're doing. You know? Well, yeah, and that's the case with with every exercise. I mean, that's the case with squats, with deadlifts, with uh, bench press, military press, everything. How many half reps do you see on on all of those exercises? And you know, if they if they were to do it properly, they would probably have to cut their weight. In some cases, I see a lot where it's just ridiculous. They probably would have to go down, you know, 30, 40 percent just to do one proper rep. Well, here's the thing, too, and this is what I understand. Uh, in my gym, all the squat racks are next to each other, right? Yeah, same, same. So like, I'm in the middle squat rack, and there's a dude squatting on the right of me and a dude squatting on the left of me, you know. And obviously, you, you everyone looks at each other when they're lifting. It's just, you know, you look around or whatever. Yeah. And growing up, how I learned to train was a lot just from watching the members. You know, I was working in a gym when I was 14. So I, while I was working and cleaning equipment, I would watch people do exercises, you know. Yeah. That's how I would learn. And so if you're squatting – 225, and the other dude squatting 225, but yet you're going all the way down to the ground and all the way up with each rep, and they're doing these half reps, and they look at you doing the same weight but going all the way down, don't you think you would be like, wow, I suck. Maybe I should go all the way down. Or you even like, I mean? maybe I should try that. Like, huh, that looks interesting. Yeah, like, wow, he's actually lifting just as much as me, but his ass is to the ground. Maybe I should try that. It's probably a better workout. Yeah. You know, this dude is clearly in better shape than I am. He might know what he's doing. You know, like, that's how I thought when I was a kid. I would look at the people who are in the best shape, and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to do what that guy's doing. Yeah. Or girl, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's true. And uh, that's the, how weight, I the weight that you're... She watched me lifting all the time. She's like, I want to be with that guy. Right, babe? <laughs> <laughs> That's a... She was like she was attracted to my grunting. That yeah, that's what gets them grunting. That's what gets their attention. Uh, that's that's it. That's the that's a mating call. It works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that's very true. And what are some of the exercises, specific exercises? Like for instance, I'll kick it off with exercises that I think are absolutely worthless. A lot of people do side bends. Why would any – and you usually see a lot of overweight people doing side bends. Why? Would, to, to get bigger obliques so you can look fatter? Like that, this is an example of an exercise that I just don't understand. 
Now, which which side bends do you mean? Because Gra- like I, grab a a forty five pound plate and then just bend to the side, bend to the side, so you can get bigger and bigger obliques. Which means you have <laughs> which means you have to stay leaner and leaner, or you just look fat. Well, I mean, to be honest, it's actually one of my favorite exercises. Well, do you, do you have small obliques though? Yeah. Well, then that's I mean that uh, I the I guess okay I'll qualify that. If you have underdeveloped obliques, I guess it would make sense. But in the majority of people that I've worked with, by well, I don't have small obliques. I mean, I have a tight core. That's, a, that's what I thought you meant. Yeah, no, no. I mean, like the oblique muscle itself. If it gets too big, like for instance, the guy uh, Lazar Angel, whatever his name, that dude has massive obliques, and if he doesn't stay lean, he it would just look ridiculous. It would look like a muffin top. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Well, I the way I I feel like the what irritates you is how that website that website how that exercise is performed as opposed to the exercise itself because I get irritated or why by, people are doing it like they think that's going to give them a, a great you know core yeah you know, when I, when they're ten percent like, over where they need to be to even look you know have a core <laughs> yeah exactly and with that exercise too I mean the way I teach it I I I basically feel every like the entire exercise like in the middle of my core so i'm hitting my oblique i'm hitting my serratus a bit mm-hmm. and it's much more than just like rocking back and forth you know i keep my body super stiff mm-hmm. as i as i dip down to one side i keep my core flexed and i i really feel it in my obliques and i do enjoy the exercise you know but when you just see someone grab a 45 pound plate and they just rock back and forth like they're you know singing a tune in their head <laughs> I get irritated with that because then I'm like, what are you even doing? Like, do you even feel that anywhere? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because if you're, if, when your hips are swaying like left and right, three feet each side, it's not, the exercise is pointless, you know? Right. I guess there's also the point of though, like if you're somebody like you, you're lean, you're muscular, it can work. But for the average person that I see doing side bends, like I said, it's just overweight and they're not getting thinner and it's not going to help. It's like, if, especially you'll see it with, with girls, for instance, if a girl is overweight and she's not going to reduce her body fat percentage, she probably shouldn't lift weights because it's just going to make her look bigger. Like it's not going to make her look better. You know what I mean? I agree. I guess what the exercises that irritate me the most that I see people do and not to not talk about obviously form and four range motion yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get mostly irritated with the trainers in my gym. And oh, yeah. the trainers in my gym that are having their 200 pound overweight clients do like a standing overhead tricep extension with like a 10 pound dumbbell. I just want to <laughs> like take that dumbbell and smash their head with it. Yes. Because, and also like, and I also hate the trainers that have their clients do like squats on a BOSU ball. It's like this yeah. lady's 200 pounds overweight. She'd get a better workout if you had her sit down on the ground and stand up 50 times in a row. Yep. You know what I mean? And they, they, they try to, you know, impress their client. Ooh, this exercise is making it hard for me to stand up straight. Like, wow, I must be working a lot of, a lot of uh, muscle here, you know? Yeah. When there, when there's, I've seen quite a few studies that show that there, there's no good use for the BOSU ball in terms of weightlifting. Like the whole instability thing is, it's just been debunked. Yeah, I like to use the BOSU ball when I do, I do this like, um, this abdominal superset where, I'll lay on the floor and I'll do 30 floor crunches and mm. then I'll go, on, I'll roll over onto the BOSU ball and do 30 crunches that way mm. to get an even deeper, like, arch my back, you know? Right, right. That's yeah, no, I mean, I like, for floor. standing on the little half ball for squats or, you know, getting on there for your chest pressing or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I guess, I guess, yeah, I get more, I get more irritated with the use of exercises by trainers that make no sense, you yeah. know? Yeah, like for instance, hyperextensions. You have, again, the, one, the people I see doing hyperextensions are not in shape at all. They never deadlift, they never squat, so they're not really doing anything. Like that's, if you want a strong back and a strong lower back, just deadlift and squat heavy a few times a week, and that's, or, or even once a week if you're doing, depending on your, how your program is set up. But hyperextensions, I, I never do hyperextensions, and I know that like, so there are some valid uses of hyperextensions if you're doing rehab, or I know that there are some powerlifting routines that include hyperextensions. But 
just doing hyper extensions is, is going to do nothing. Why? What, 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 for what? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. If you're working your core, you're getting a lot of lower back work on your exercises, like your deadlifts and your squats and whatnot. Um, oh, this exercise, the the glute bridge, <laughs> the, the glute the glute raise. I always see trainers show this exercise and just show it the wrong way to do it. Yeah. And the whole point of that exercise is that when you get to the top of the movement. You squeeze your butt as hard as you can to get that hip hyperextension at the top. So you right. push through, you know. I was, well, I, I was in Florida at a, doing a photo shoot for BSN, and this dude was training these two chicks, you know, basically just flirting the whole time while he's training them. Yeah, standard. And he's, you know, he's having them do the glute, the glute raise, I mean, the glute bridge, and he puts the bar in their waist, and then he just, like, tells them how beautiful they are the whole time they're doing it. And... It's like they didn't even do one rep. They didn't even get any activation in their butt because they never went to the top of the movement and squeezed and pushed through, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and, a good point. You know, it's, it, not, it's not necessarily, and that's a good example of where it's not the weight that you're using. It's like, yes, it's good to get stronger and be able to, you see some pretty impressive videos of girls on YouTube, you know, where they can they can do hip thrusts with 225 pounds and do it right, but that's... You know, the, the point is doing it correct. And if that means you start with the bar in the beginning and that's all you can do, then that's where you start. Yeah, you know, I guess when we talk about things like this, you know, it, it kind of brings a realization of how scary it is for beginners and, you know, people looking for a trainer in a gym. Yeah. Imagine if you had the... Imagine if you knew nothing and you had to go rely on a trainer at your gym right now. If I went to my gym right now and had to get a trainer, I'd probably just not go to the gym. I, I did that. I mean, years ago and I, I just, you know, I tried all different types of things and work with trainers that would have me do all kinds of ridiculous stuff. I've lived that. I know how that is. That should be a video series. I'm going to like wear baggy clothes and then ha hire trainers to train me. <laughs> <the week. laughs> That's a great idea. I'll wear like a hidden camera. I'm like, yeah. Oh, what are we doing now? Oh, how do you, how do I properly do a, a chest press? <laughs> that actually would be funny. What? Stop. Stop halfway? Okay. <laughs> yeah, to protect my shoulders? Oh, okay. <laughs> Squat two inches down to make sure I don't blow out my knees? All right, yeah, that's great. That makes sense. Don't ever, hey, don't, ever do dead, don't ever deadlift because it's going to split my spine in half? Yeah, okay, okay. That's a good idea. Don't you do that. That's my idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, you're, you're the YouTube star, not me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good TV show, Undercover Trainer. Ah, oh, that's a good idea. That's a good name. That is a good name. Go to different, babe, go to different gyms, undercover, and get trained. Undercovertrainer.com. Oh, somebody has it, but you could get it. It's not a website. It's just park. You could get it. That's probably a different website. No, yeah, no, it's not, actually. It's just a <laughs> nothing. <laughs> probably a porn that, site. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually would be a, a sensible porn name, too. Well, cool. I guess one last thing, just to my little last peeve, is um, Smith Machine stuff, where and I used to use a Smith Machine, and you know, there's there's research that shows, and I even need the research. Just do go squat on a Smith Machine, and then go squat a free bar, same weight, and you're going to immediately feel the difference. Free, free, free weight uh, is is just much harder, and and research backs that up that you're going to make better gains. Um, doing, you know, most people are doing the, if they're going to use this Smith machine, it's going to be chest pressing, shoulder pressing, and squatting. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, what, what's a valid use of this Smith machine? I don't know. I get unless maybe if you have like a rehab type situation, I just why, why, why? If it's easier, I think a general rule in weightlifting, I don't know if you agree, is if it makes it easier to do, it's probably not a good idea. Yeah, I feel like... Like, if it just means less effort, tactful. you're like, oh, that's easier. I'll just do that. You have to be very tactful when you use the Smith Machine. Um, I know Erica likes to use the Smith Machine for her squats because she does have a bit of pain in her lower back. And right. so... She's able to put her feet a bit further forward to reduce yeah. butt wink and lower back pressure. So like, and see that makes sense. There's a reason for that. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason. And she could also then probably front squat with free weight and be okay then. Yeah, her front squats. She always uses free weights with front squats. Exactly. Um, there, there's an exercise I actually just did for my video. It's uh, coming out. It's the last video in my my holiday series for glutes and calves. Mm. 
but I used the Smith machine for, for barbell step ups. So mm. basically I had the bench in front of me and I would step I step back and go all the way to the floor with my knee. Oh right. And then step up and then as I step up on the bench, um, you know, I lift my, my leg in the air. So I'm doing one leg at a time, obviously. Right. So it really helps when exercise like that, so you can focus on your, your glutes a bit more. Right. Obviously, you could do it free weights, and it'd be a bit harder, but for yeah, me, we're really. going for more endurance and a, a volume. It didn't really matter what I used. Yeah. And sometimes I'll use the Smith machine for, like, um, a bent-over reverse grip row mm. because you can position your body over the bar and maybe just focus more on like that scapular retraction. So yeah, as long as there's a a reason why you're doing it, you're not using it all the time. You know, the Smith machine can be very helpful. I still don't understand, you know, the people who lay down under the Smith machine and, and do the leg press into the air. I don't understand. I just saw someone doing that again this weekend. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, where, why, what is that even? What is going on right now? <laughs> I'm like, how do you get the bar off and turn it with your foot? (laughs) (laughs) Skills, skills. Yeah, no, I I can definitely see that. I guess uh, my my thing on the Smith machine is don't replace your your big compound lifts with Smith Smith machine versions of it. Don't, you know, I I used to only train on the Smith machine years ago. Or, or do most of my my barbell pressing and my squatting on the Smith machine. And when I went from the Smith to the to the, just got off the Smith, went to you know free free weight bench and stuff, I was amazed at how much weaker. I think I was like I had to take 50 pounds off the bar just because I you know just didn't have all the the little muscles and all the all the that stabilize on the free weight bench. For instance, uh, it was it was I was pretty shocked. And also, if you're going to use the, the Smith machine, you can't not count the weight of the bar because it weighs nothing. True. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. You know, like... And people use, I think you, a lot of guys use the Smith machine so they can put like yes, plates. a bunch of weight plates on. Like I was watching this guy um, shoulder press, and I think the Smith machine is one of the worst exercises or one of the worst things you can use for your shoulder press because I think it gives a false impression of proper form if you're not used yeah. to doing it properly, you know? Yeah. And so this guy was shoulder pressing like two like two forty fives on each side and he he was going down like to maybe his nose, so he wasn't even going down to his chest. Yeah. And he had a spotter. And every time he brought the weight down, he could never do one rep by himself. His spotter had to jump in and grab his elbows. I'm like, dude, just do one rep by yourself. Yeah. And get you off know? the Smith, just 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 go stand. And try with 25s. He probably would struggle doing the overhead press with 25s, doing it properly. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's in that. And people, you know, they might think some of the listeners might think that you know Mike and Scott are just talking smack. But we we talk about these things because we we know what it's going to do for you. Yeah. And you know, it's more cautionary. You know, don't be don't be this these people because. It, it really actually impairs your uh, – it's going to get in the way of making gains. It really is. And in the beginning, yeah, you're new, and pretty much anything you do is going to build muscle and strength. But once those newbie gains are gone, uh, you really need to know what you're doing, and you really need to avoid these mistakes because these are the major mistakes that just stick people in a rut. And you know, it's, of course, showing up and moving your body and doing exercise is better than not. But these people that we're talking about are the people that look the same year after year. They're lifting more or less the same weights year after year. Uh, you know, it can be demotivating. I agree. Yeah. All right, cool. So last but not least, you have a new website coming out soon, right? I, it might be up by the time this is live, but uh, can you just tell us quickly about – I know you're pretty excited about it. So, you know, how what's, – what's the deal? Yeah, we've been working on this thing for so long, probably the last six months, just trying to get everything done and perfect. Yeah. Um, we took, you're able to now build a profile and interact with friends and other community members through forums or through the profiles itself, similar to how any other social media platform works. You can friend request people, you have a board, photos, you can upload videos, um, and then fitness-wise, you have progress charts you can fill in. You have like a section where you can upload your, your max lifts. You have a place where you can put all your measurements and all that good stuff. 
And then on top of that, by going into the forum section, you know, you're, because they're custom made, everything's linked to it, to itself. So, right, right. for example, I have a, what I'm doing too is I'm starting to uh, incorporate information, workout routines, articles, recipes, and whatnot from members into the website. Mm. And this is going to be my way of, you know, we talked a little bit earlier. My main goal now is to start to kind of, you know, bring other people up. Mm-hmm. So this is my way now of giving people a chance to have a voice. And, you know, just like Facebook, you have people who can follow your page. You have people who can be your friend. And every single page on the site that has your content on it also has, like, a, a social media share buttons. So by uploading content to the website and then sharing that page, people are able to come back and see all of your content. And the way the videos work on my website, you're inserting your your YouTube URL. You know what I mean? So not only are people watching your videos, but they're also subscribing to your channel through my site because they they can see your videos right there. They know how to get to it. Right. And what I'm also doing is I'm allowing people to put information and and more in-depth routines, exercises, and exclusive content in the platinum section on my website so affiliates can actually sell the platinum membership, which is $7.99, gives you access to the entire site, the meal plan service, and all that. And allow and it's going to allow them to actually earn some income while they're trying to build their brand. I mean, cool. YouTube YouTube is great and all, but for people who are just starting out, I mean, you're probably making like maybe a dollar per video a month. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not that lucrative like it used to be. Mm. And so I'm thinking, okay, these people are trying to build businesses, they're trying to get their name out there. How can I utilize my massive following? And how can I utilize all the opportunities that I've had to start to help these people who are in it, you know, for the right reasons? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. For the, for the average user, you know, if you're looking for great information or for tips or if you want, if you need help, you know, that's what my forums are for, and they're free to use. Go in the forum section. You can post questions. You can chat with other community members. You can read previous posts. You know what I mean? Yeah, great. So and this is this is ScottHermanFitness.com, right? Yep, this is ScottHermanFitness.com. Cool, yeah. So the, the, for the listeners, definitely go check it out. Uh, and then um, once once the site changes, it'll be MuscularStrength.com. So if you happen to go there and it says oh, MuscularStrength.com, okay. you know, you're in the right place. Yeah, it'll, it'll forward you, obviously. It'll take you there. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for, for taking the time. Thanks again, man. This is awesome. I, uh, I know that these are all just good topics that are going to really complement what, what the listeners have learned just in reading the books, you know. Yeah, of course, man. You know, it's my pleasure to be here and chat with you and catch up and, you know, fill in your community on what's going on. And yeah. Having me. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Thanks again and uh, have a great day and we'll definitely stay in touch so we, you know, maybe we can figure out something to do together. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, bro. Cool, man.